I'm Rhonda, Director of Groundwork Arts. Today we get to meet artist INS, check out their work, and get a sneak peek behind the scenes. We are here today in the studio with INS in beautiful Joshua Tree, California, and so happy to be here with you in your space. Thank you for having me. You work in a range of media, oil painting and watercolor and drawing, artist books, collages, installation, some fiber arts. Yep. And, um, and what I know of your work definitely um, has a focus on abstraction. Well, I do like abstract art. It's sort of where I got my start because it's where I went to the museums a lot when I was a kid and I was just super attracted to it. And so I kind of fell in love with Paul Clay. He was, he's, he does a lot of like childlike art and I was kind of a child when I got uh, interested in him. So I sort of followed him and Kandinsky and I went to the museums when I was a preteen. I'd take the bus there because I'm totally self-taught. Nobody in my family was like an art person or anything. I have no idea. I just was making art when I was a kid, like putting things together with crayons and making artist books with scotch tape and all kinds of <laughs> weird things. I don't know why. And I made enough paintings that I thought I'm an artist. So I just wanted to be one. And I sold my first painting at 16. So I figured I'm a professional artist because, I mean, it was only like enough to get food and some gas in my car. What did you think an artist was? Not necessarily being rich and famous or an art star, but being able to um, always, being able to make art and not being held back. Well, Rock and Refuge is like this refuge of the desert um, against the rocks. The way the architecture here in the desert has a contrast against the boulders. So even though they're really colorful, a lot of it is like houses against the boulders, the weird houses here. You know, kind of like, you know, the ones that are hidden into like remote areas. Some of them might have weird terraces that come out onto, you know, like against the boulders and the way they look with the crazy trees and all that stuff inspires me. I feel more in touch with my art, as a matter of fact, and I feel more in touch with nature and the environment and myself, really. I used to work in the garment business, cutting patterns for clothing. So the shapes of the patterns really influenced my work early on. I was just especially attracted to really bold, crazy fabrics. And the ones that work best with the work that I'm doing are the thicker bolt fabrics that have, you know, they don't give. Mm -hmm. But I really like these vintage ones that are like almost like child, child vintage ones. This is sort of like an Alice in Wonderland. And um, this one has bunnies. And I just, this is all I have left of this one. I always begin with drawings. So I always come here and I draw things. And I might draw a bunch of different things until, like, that I hate. Until I come up with something, like, that I like. So I started this one. So, like, I drew this one. And I liked how this one looked. So I start with this paper, which is pattern paper, and I'll transfer this onto a panel. So I'll use the same size as the panel, and I'll draw this onto here. And then I'll, once I draw this on here, I'll cut out all these shapes and start gluing some of them on here. But I'll make a pattern by just tracing this with a pen. before I cut it out. And 
and then I'll just carefully cut it out. Like so, I won't do the whole thing, but you can see how I do it. And then I'll use the pieces that I cut out. Like, let's say this is this one. And I'll trace it so I know where to put the glue. And then I'll just take this polymer even thing and then I'll carefully put it on like this. It's not um, too planned out. <laughs> it's all random and I just go by my gut and my instinct. You can plan stuff out but it's not always going to end up the way you thought it might. It never will end up the way you think it's going to end up anyway. So you might as well go with the happy mistakes because and in fact if you're starting to do something and you think gosh you know i think this is really stupid start going in that direction because <laughs> that is the direction you want to go in i'm gonna remember that it really is that's nope. the that's the direction of originality and creativity and all the things that you go oh that's so dumb i don't want to go in that direction and keep turning in that direction I would say not to be afraid to fail. That's the biggest thing. To fail over and over and over. Like you can't be scared of that because it's gonna happen. And to never give up. Linda, thank you so much for having us in your space, sharing your work and giving us some insight into your process. It's really special. It's totally my pleasure. Thank you for coming.